Hello everyone, welcome back to the Plunder Den and the conclusion of our bark build. So uh, in this video, we're going to cover the construction of the sails and flag for our ship, as well as doing a painting tutorial on the cannons, swivel guns, uh, our masts, and some ship accessories. So to complete this build. So this is the final product uh, of our completed uh, Dutch uh, bark. Uh, so I did uh, do one thing in here that I did differently that I've never done on another ship before. Is I made this portable. Now, unfortunately, I didn't show it in the video, so that's why I'm going to discuss it right now. Uh, and really, the only difference is, is I didn't glue these masts down. I tightened the rigging in a certain way so I can uh, fold it down. So I'll show you. Just briefly here. Bring that down. Pull this up. And there we go. We're ready for transport. Uh, I just I really want to try it out in this bark. I do plan on doing it on bigger ships. Uh, but this is my first attempt at that. Uh, I've always glued the mast down. Um, but uh, this worked out great. And uh, I do want to take this show on the road and, and uh, travel and do uh, blood and plunder elsewhere. Uh, other than the plunder den. All right. So... Uh, before we get down to the table, I just want to uh, ask if you guys are interested in, in uh, what I'm putting out here and uh, uh, or you like what I'm doing, uh, please uh, hit the like button and uh, consider subscribing to The Plunder Den uh, so you can get uh, notified of any uh, new projects that I'm working on. But uh, let's get down to the table and uh, let us see what I'm up to. Okay, I just wanted to start off by uh, just showing you the instructions that came in the uh, bark uh, box. So just a basic outline, gives you a part list, <clears throat> kind of tells you where the rigging needs to go and everything needs to be in, in put on. Uh, so I'm just kind of showing you all the different pieces uh, that I have. That anchor there uh, is actually uh, from a ship accessories uh, that Firelock Games offers. Um, Sandpaper, uh, I just sand all these pieces down. Um, there's some flashing on them. S sometimes there's lines in, in where the molding was. Um, <clears throat> so I give everything a good uh, sanding down. Uh, sometimes I got to use uh, clippers. and So this one I'm just trying to illustrate here uh, the pieces that I had to go ahead and sand. Just trying to show you which ones I used. Um, this is the glue I use for gluing most of this project together, clear Gorilla Glue. Um, just kind of, uh, demonstrating, uh, how I do that. Uh, I just kind of put a dab in the middle and then on the back. Uh, you can see that piece of insulation, uh, foam there. I kind of have that so it dries, they dry straight. I just kind of sit the tops of the guns on there and they I just glue them all at once and just let them sit there for you know 24 hours and then they have a good bond then I'll like uh use them to uh then they're easier easier to paint so these pieces here uh it's the kind of where the they're a part of the mast that holds these sails up so I'm just kind of showing you I already glued one together there uh and these little pieces here they're, they're kind of like little arms um, and that's where your, uh, your parts of your mask are going to sit into. So again, just using that Gorilla Glue, um, and gluing these together. I kind of glue everything in, in stages here, just certain things I just glue together and then let, let them dry for 24 hours and come back and glue more pieces together. Uh, so sometimes this could take two or three days. Uh, I, I know when I did the sixth rate frigate, uh, it was a couple of weeks um, because certain things had to be glued together first. It took some time to uh, glue that ship together. Uh, but this is the bark, so it's a little easier. Just a few parts. All right, I'm just going to show you how I put together. Well, actually, I haven't put together the anchor yet, but this is how I put it together. I had to sand the end of that uh, anchor there because sometimes they don't fit too well in the hole. Um, so I had to add that in there. Uh, 
All right, I just wanted to show you the box. This is uh, Blood and Plunder um, the Ship Accessories, so a uh, product by Farlock Games. Uh, they have a whole bunch of different types of uh, anchors, and they have a lantern in there and, um, you know, something for steering the ship in. So you can just add those accessories in. So I've decided to add an anchor to uh, this ship build. So I just put some of that uh, Gorilla Glue. And just going to twist her in there. And again, I'm just going to let that sit for, for 24 hours and uh, let that dry. Um, this Gorilla Glue works really well um, on these metal pieces um, and uh, really gives a good bond. Okay, so now I'm showing you the mass. So I got kind of a, some on the plate already, and I've kind of uh, painted them in different stages. So I start with the uh, dark tone wash from Army Painter. And then I'll move to a strong tone uh, wash by Army Painter. So I'll put the dark tone on first. Uh, and then I just, to add a little bit of color, I'll add that uh, strong tone. Remember that strong tone's got kind of a brown color. Um, but I do like to make it dark, so I, I usually start with that dark tone. Of course, the uh, the masks, uh, they come with, uh, I mean, they already are. They look like unfinished wood, essentially. Um, they're just dowels. Um, so we got to add some to it. I'm going to add color to my mask, too. I always, uh, if everybody's familiar with my ship builds, uh, I put a lot of color on my uh, masks, and uh, I just really add a lot to it, uh, to the overall scheme of the color a ship um so but uh to do a base coat i usually put these two washes on first and it soaks real good into that wood uh, like i said it's unfinished uh dowels um so that wash kind of soaks in there you might have to do a few passes um you know just kind of demonstrating one that that one i already had the black tone on now i'm adding the strong tone to it I like to do that uh, two-tone color going on there. <clears throat> so, of course, I, I paint the everything except for where my fingers are. <laughs> uh, and then the, I kind of let them sit there on the plate. It doesn't take long, to be honest, to dry for the washes. They, they dry pretty quickly. So then I just flip them around and do the other side. But um, I probably won't show you that in the video. I'll just to show you uh, the basics of how to get started. All right, just showing you the swivel guns um, and the uh, cannons. And what I'm showing here is these are the items that I'm going to paint with uh, that multi-surface black craft paint by Folk Art. Um, I put a lot of this uh, as a base on a lot of things. Uh, but uh, to paint these uh, pieces, uh, we are going to do similar to the ship. We're going to put that black coat down. So as you can see, I'm just covering it up. Make sure you uh, uh, make sure you pass it over quite a few times because it, it will get clumpy, just like I talked about uh, before, and we just wanted to smooth it out. Um, I just wanted to show you what I was doing here. Yeah, that, that, I mean, you want to make sure, like I said, you want to brush that out because it, uh, especially on these little pieces like these uh, swivel guns, um, you don't want to, to get too, too clumpy on there. But, uh, like I said before, the paint will dry uh, and it'll bond real tightly to the whatever you're painting. Okay, uh, so these are the masks. I went ahead and glued them. Uh, I didn't show that on the video, but essentially I just glued all the pieces together. I followed the instructions that Firelock Games provides. And I'm showing you that I... I glued on that front uh, piece on the, on the boat and I'm right now I'm just trying it out uh, at this point I wasn't sure if I was going to do the uh, transportable uh, uh, mass to make this bark transportable but I was just seeing how tightly they fit in there uh, but uh, as I, I said in the intro I decided to go for it and tried something different and I didn't glue them in so I left them loose which is something I never do <laughs> All right, uh, so we're going to add some yellow ochre. Um, I'm gonna, I decided when uh, after I finished the first paint uh, build that I 
I, I do want to put some yellow on these masts, so I say, well, I need to add some yellow to the actual base of the boat too, just so it all ties in together. So I'm going to show you a few things that I'm going to be painting uh, with this yellow ochre. So I decided to do this trim. Um, probably going to do the top of it orange, but then I'm going to do this uh, yellow ochre. This is a similar scheme that I did uh, on my Dutch uh, uh, brigantine. I really liked uh, the way that looked. I wanted to carry those same kind of concepts and colors in, and share it with you guys in this bark build. I think I was really happy the way that one turned out. So that brush I'm using is the uh, the one I painted the ship with. The uh, I just painted it um, with that same square brush uh, that's nice and easy to uh, paint details with. So I decided to do these uh, these two uh, markers here. It's kind of like the ladder that gets into the boat uh, used in the game uh, to help you steer your ship uh, with the marker. Uh, I decided to uh, uh, put some yellow on it. Yeah, when I did my Tartana build, uh, I kind of put these yellow, I really like the yellow ochre on that, to just highlights that, um, but it adds a, adds a visual appeal. And I, like I said, I want to tie it into the mask because I want to add yellow. I'll probably do the top of the gun ports too, I believe. Um, just adds a little extra. Yeah, just right there, just on the top of that. So this will tie in nicely uh, all together uh, when I, we finish the top. Like I said, I really like to add a lot of color to uh, my mass. So I want to translate it into the base of the ship as well. So I'm just uh, showing you some of the areas that I'm going to be painting. Um, I'm not going to show you all of them. Um, but uh, you kind of get the idea of some of the areas I want to touch. Um, I'll probably do the very tip of the boat too, yeah, so that, uh, where the rigging sits in, paint that yellow as well. But it was tricky, uh, holding this and, and trying to <laughs> paint it stable to show you guys. Um, like I'm, I'm only going to do one side, obviously, and I'll stop the camera and finish the paint off myself, but uh, without, uh, having it on the camera, <laughs> it was a little tricky. But you guys, guys get an idea of what I'm going to paint yellow. Right, we're going to go to some uh, my friend Pablo here, this orange. And uh, we're going to hit a few areas, uh, again, to tie in those colors. I'm going to mix it with that yellow ochre. Um, so this will match, uh, um, really, the bottom. So remember, we painted the all the trim on the bottom of the ship this color. I want to carry that same color uh, over um, into the mass. Just making a little bit of room. <laughs> we got my small little table I'm trying to film on here. Uh, but uh, we're doing our best. All right, so I'm just showing you some areas that I'm uh, uh, picking out. Um, another reason why I put that uh, washes on first, uh, sometimes I get some, I like to have it as an undercoat. Uh, so when you put that Gorilla Glue on, um, sometimes it's hard to paint over top of it. Uh, and at least you have those dark tones underneath the super glue. Um, I know I, 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 you don't want to put too many layers of paint on your mask. Otherwise, it's too hard to put them together. And then when you're trying to assemble them, it actually scrapes the paint off. Um, I'm telling you all these things because I've already learned it from doing it several times myself. Uh, you know, I'd love to just paint it all the pieces separately and then glue it all together. And I have done that. Um, but it's very hard to actually put the pieces together. All right, so I'm going to kind of go like halfway down, probably on both masks, and add that orange.
And like I said, when I was painting the yellow, I'm going to do the tops. That same uh, mixture of uh, yellow ochre and, and that Pablo orange. Gives you that dull orange color, which is, uh, like I said, matches the base of the ship. But I really like it. it uh, I don't want to, you know, I want it to be bright, but not uh, not crazy bright. So I'm still using kind of uh, flat, uh, flat colors. All right, we're probably gonna uh, fast forward here. Um, I think you guys get an idea of what I'm doing here. You guys don't need to, to see me paint the entire mass. Okay, we're gonna move on to the cannons. So as you can see, the black craft paint that we put on is dried. Uh, everything looks good on there. Uh, and we're gonna do uh, some layering on this. So we're gonna start with this oak brown by Army Painter. So the oak brown is very similar to the real brown uh, um, a full car paint so I, that's why I use this one uh, as a as a base I'm using this uh, angled uh, army painter brush it's got kind of a loose end on it so I can kind of do dry brushing with it that's why I like to use this brush so I'm going to use the same technique that I dry brush the ship with but we're going to do it in micro mini size <laughs> We're going to do it at a very small size here, but the same concepts apply. So I'm just going to try to show you as best I can. I know this is really small, um, but I'm essentially dry brushing that brown uh, onto, uh, onto the cannon base. I'm going to try to make some wood grains. So I'm going to do a few layers of colors, and I'm going to make some wood grain on this, uh, on this cannon. Now you could probably just leave the cannon that way. I've seen people just put a little brown on there and maybe paint the wheels red or something and just leave the rest. Um, that's entirely up to you. Um, you can you can just uh, uh, go past this point. Uh, but I really uh, I really want uh, again my color scheme of my boat to carry over into my cannons. Uh, it'll carry over into the anchor and the swivel guns. I like to use all those same colors so it looks like it's all part of the same boat. Uh, the only one I probably didn't do that was the pirate one. I wanted to make it look like they were a misfit pile of cannons. <laughs> all right, so I've just showed you the, uh, the brown after I put it on. So then I'm going to go to a lighter brown. Similar to the bark brown, but this one's called fur brown by Army Painter. So I'm just using comparable colors, the Army Painter paints. I'm using these detailed paints because it's you know it's a smaller space, um, and uh, you know it it works much better in these smaller conditions, better than the um, than the uh, craft paint. All right, same techniques, just pulling out the colors. It's virtually the same thing I did on the boat, but just in smaller size. I even am tapping it out on the paper towel too. I forgot to mention that, same as before. So we're just, uh, just brushing that on. It doesn't take much to lighten it up. Um, it, it is a little tricky. So there we go, we got a little bit of a uh, wood green going on. Again, you could stop at this point right now and, and uh, and uh, it would look just fan fantastic. But I'm going to go even further. I want to get down to those light colors. So similar to the camel, I'm going to use a desert yellow by Army Painter. Another comparable color. Because I want to get that aged wood look. Now normally I would do all the cannons all in a row, but I'm just doing these uh, separately just so you can see. I'm going to do the other three off camera. I'm just painting the one for you guys uh, here just to see the concept, and then uh, I'll go ahead and paint the rest. All right, so you can see how much that already adds to it. You don't have to, just a little bit of a tap, and then you're, you're golden there. 
Another good reason to put that craft paint on is I like to hold the end of the... That's how I painted. I know some people glue them on top of things and uh, whatever works for you, right? All right, so hopefully we can see that. I know it's hard uh, putting it into the camera. You can see how it, uh, how it looks because uh, it's so small. But essentially I've brought out the, some of the wood grains on there. All right, so I'm going to do that same uh, color technique. And we're going to carry it over um, uh, to the anchor here. So on the top of this anchor, it's kind of got a wood grains at the very top. Um, so it looks uh, it looks similar to the uh, to the to the cannons, you know, like the cradle that the cannon sits in. So we're gonna do the same uh, three colors, and uh, we're gonna brush dry brush them on. Uh, you can see there that a few times I didn't even tap didn't even tap it on the paper towel. Um, sometimes if I spread the paint enough out on the plate, you don't really need to tap it on the paper towel. You, you just have the right amount on there. Um, but if I feel I have too much on the brush, I will go to the, uh, as I did right there, I just went to the paper towel. Because otherwise, it'll just, again, like the ship, you just make a big brown streak on it. You don't want that. You just want it to just to be dry brushed on there. All right, so I'm going to skip forward here. Um... I am going to do the same uh, with the swivel guns, but on the very end of the swivel guns. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna show you that part. Um, it's just a you'll see it in the next step. But uh, we'll uh, move forward here. Okay, we're gonna go similar to the ship. We're gonna go with army green, and we're gonna hit those cannons again. Uh, I'm gonna I want to go with the uh, so yeah I put the brown um, wood tones in there. But I am going to add some color to it. So there's going to be some wood tones, which is going to carry on the bottom. And um, But I want to look like it's been painted on this green color. And so it's going to match the inside of uh, our Dutch bark. Again, carrying the same color scheme over into the cannons. So yes, this is fickle work. <laughs> it's really small. And I'm using my really small 0, 0.00 brush to uh, put this in. Um, and uh, we are going to go to another level and we're going to highlight that green too. So it's going to get even even more cramped in there. Um, but uh, I just kind of wanted to show you uh, what I was painting green here. Um, and I'm going to do the front of the cannon as well. Just kind of uh, anywhere I think the it should be green. Just kind of that housing for the for the cannon. Um, I'm not going to cover all the wood grains, but I'm going to cover some of it. So you'll have some wood grain color showing. You'll have the green, and then of course we're going to highlight that green. I do plan on uh, probably put some more color on the wheels. It looks like I decided in this in this part of the video to paint both sides. Probably I I would have normally moved on uh, past this point, but <clears throat> so you guys can just see what I'm doing here uh, and move on to uh, uh, painting the anchor. Because I do want to add some green to the anchor as well. All right, this is a close up. Trying to yeah, I'm trying my best here. It, it, okay, that one's pretty good. You can see it fairly good there. What we got going on there. All right, moving on to the anchor, and we're really just going to paint those uh, those stripes that are on it. So I'm going to leave more of the wood tone out, and I'm just going to paint these these bands that are on the wood here uh, with that same army green. Yeah, I don't have it in the camera for you. It's too hard to hold it and face the camera, so I'm just going to put it down on the table here and just a little easier to paint it, but just so you get the idea. 
And then the, I didn't show you the swivel guns in the last uh, portion of the video, but here I've already added that uh, brown tones to the very back. And I'm just going to paint the, the little bulb that's on the end. See right there? Yeah, I'm just going to put that in uh, so I can still carry some of those colors over, even into my swivel guns. Okay, we're going to go to the Scully hide, same as the boat, um, to give our highlights. So I'm probably just going to show you the, uh, um, just the cannon briefly here. Um, just to show you what, the, what I'm talking about. Uh, and uh, really on the anchor and the swivel gun, I'm just going to highlight the parts that I touched with the green. Um, so I'm probably not going to, I'm just going to fast forward through that. <laughs> I'm just showing you the zero <laughs> designation on that brush. Again, just using that very fine brush. This is going to be really tricky. But same concept, start in the center. Uh, and then put a little paint there and then try to brush it out and work it in. Uh, same concept, but at a really small, small uh, level. So I really wanted to keep this portion of the video just so you can see um, how I do that. Um, and, and it adds highlight to your green cannon. So we'll do uh, both sides here. And then just on that anchor, yeah, I'm just going to uh, touch on, on uh, those top parts. All right, so we're going to move on. Um, I think you guys get an idea of uh, where I'm highlighting things. Just on the green, same on the swivel gun, we'll do the same thing. Uh, but we'll, we'll move on here. Okay, next color is Lava Orange. So I decided to use this uh, color. Um, it's similar to the Pablo Orange, um, uh, but I want to hit those um, those wheels. So I'm gonna I'm gonna carry some of that orange color into the wheels, and I'll probably do the little bolt on it uh, with some kind of yellow. So again, using that same uh, very small, fine brush and uh, just uh, putting in that, uh, that Lava Orange. Lava Orange is a great color uh, by Army Painter. I use it a lot to uh, weather leather. So if you dry brush or, or put things in, it works great for adding um, a weathered look to a leather, like belts and stuff. Um, but I think uh, on these wheels, I just want it to be bright orange, uh, kind of to match the uh, the colors that are on the boat. Just a side note on that color. <laughs> All right, but just about done here. Just going to show you. So we want it to look like that. And I'm not going to show you all the other wheels. So moving on to the next color. Fire Lizard. So I decided to go with Fire Lizard by Army Painter um, to give me a similar color than that uh, yellow ochre. Uh, but I don't use craft paint in a small detail, so I need to use uh, Army Painter, uh, uh, a better quality, uh, for miniatures anyways, uh, paint. Uh, for terrain and large ships, the craft paint's awesome. Uh, but for these smaller details like this, uh, you really need, uh, you know, your favorite uh, model paint. Everybody's got their brand, um, but uh, I, I prefer Army Painter. So I'm just going to give you a lower that down so you can see it. <laughs> anyway, so there you go. You get an idea of what, what I'm talking about there. I just point to all the different ones that I, I plan on painting. I'm going to go to a uh, matte black here. Uh, and this is actually for the uh, mass. I'm going to put some stripes on here. So you can see that the color I've put on the mast, I like to have a very defined uh, break between the color and the washes. So I'll actually put an actual black line on there. I'll do a similar technique on the sails. I, I just, uh, you know, that might not actually be there on a ship or <laughs> it just to me it just finishes it off 
Um, and especially if you're struggling to have uh, them blend into each other and it just doesn't look quite right, you can just put a black line through the whole center and it really divides it up. Uh, and I just, I like the way that looks. That's what I'm just showing you there. Um, and then I do plan on uh, putting some stripes on the on the tops here. You know, I, I, I put these on and then I realized after I was putting them on that the flag is going to be covering most of it anyways. <laughs> but I guess when I pull the flag off, it'll look fantastic. Uh, so you probably didn't need that uh, extra stripe in there. But anyway, so I'm going to move forward here. I'm planning on putting stripes on the other other mast as well. Um, and then on the part that's still glued to the ship. But uh, we'll fast forward to that. You don't need to uh, watch. That's the same concept. Uh, that's that flat square brush, by the way. Uh, makes perfectly good straight lines. Uh, it's one of my favorite brushes for doing uh, these, these kind of things. All right, let's move on. So I just showed you uh, Gun Metal uh, by Army Painter. That's the uh, next color that we're going to use. Uh, and we're going to dry brush that. So I've got a bigger brush. Not a much much bigger brush, but a little bit bigger brush. Um, and we're going we're gonna to dry brush that on there. <clears throat> so usually what I do is I leave the... Uh, usually you leave this to last. I put the... Uh, uh, the uh, gunmetal on top of the black that uh, crap paint that I've already put on makes a good uh, metallic uh, dark undertone uh, especially for, for cannons um, so I can sometimes add too much uh, gunmetal to it but uh, I, I plan on putting uh, a soft uh, tone wash over top of it uh, that gives it a real weathered uh, and uh, used look again just showing you that I'm using my <laughs> I detail brush again and what i plan on doing is those there's metal bands on the cannon and i'm going to put them in that same um gun metal so i know we got it off the screen here you probably don't know what i'm talking about but uh let me uh, hopefully i'll move it closer there and you can you can see what i'm talking about just uh i don't have a steady enough hand to put it in front of the camera and paint it so i got it down on the table there just because it's such a fine uh detail that it uh, is a little challenging to paint uh, holding it up to the camera. So not only uh, do I plan on doing the bands, uh, I plan on doing um, just around the top of where the cannon sits. Um, there seems like a metal tops to the cradle um, that just needs to be uh, covered. So again, I'm painting this all off camera right now. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Um, but again, it was it's too fine of a detail. I couldn't... Uh, so I'll show you in a minute. Here we go. So there you can see where I did the bands. And then I, that's the top part I was talking about. So I just wanted you guys to see that. Um, fortunately, I had to paint it off screen, but I just couldn't hold it in front. All right, so the same uh, gun metal for the anchor. Uh, I'm going to do the loop on the top uh, and then the main body of the uh, anchor. I'm going to do it all in that uh, gun metal. And then uh, probably going to move uh, forward here and fast forward, but I am going to do the same thing to the swivel guns. So just cover the front part all in this uh, gun metal. All right, let's move on. Uh, we're just uh, just trying to save some uh, time on this video uh, to to make it a little bit uh, shorter. I think you guys get the idea of what we're doing. We're just it's going to be dry brushing the same thing on the swivel guns as well. Okay, we're going to move on to some greedy gold by Army Painter. And this is just to uh, add uh, some. You know, some colors to the buckles, and I like to do the back of the cannon, and just a few details on there that I do in the uh, greedy gold. You can see that little part where this sits on there, and then 
even uh, on the top part, uh, I put a couple of gold details on there. It just adds a little, you know, a little contrast to it. Um, just to add to it. Um, the swivel guns, I like to do the two little, little bolts that are on either side. I do that on most of my swivel guns. I add these, uh, the greedy gold to it. And it'll lose its brightness uh, once we add that uh, soft wash on top. So I'm just giving you, showing you what I'm talking about there. Just trying to give you a closer look at it. All right, we're going to go to that soft tone I talked about. And this is the, the color I like to use, a uh, wash I like to use on all my metals. I know on the ship I used uh, the uh, a darker one, uh, but on these uh, cannons and uh, even, even when I do my miniatures, uh, like the swords and, and stuff and their belts and stuff, I'll add this on to there. I really like this uh, soft tone by Army Painter. So I'm going to hit all the metal areas that I painted to gold or or uh, with uh, that uh, gun metal. And uh, we're going to dull it up. And it also gives it uh, kind of an aged look too. Similar to what we did with our uh, ship deck, right? Added those washes in there. So I'm just going to get one painted up here so you guys can you guys can see. Hopefully uh, you can translate. Yeah, that's pretty good. You can see on there. So it just adds a nice, nice rustic look to the metal. Looks like it's used. So I'm gonna do all those. Uh, I'll hit the swivel guns, uh, and then um, I'm gonna hit that anchor as well. Um, but again, I'm gonna fast forward it here because I'm just being repetitive. Same steps, uh, just different things that I'm painting. Okay, so this is uh, the rigging that we put on the ships. As you can see in the background, I've already rigged the boat. Uh, but I just wanted to show you this elastic rigging that uh, Firelock Games gives you in their models, which is uh, great uh, for these masts if you want to fold them up. And I think that was uh, <laughs> probably the idea anyways. And it, maybe it just dawned on me now that that's probably how you should do it so you can transport these things. Uh, but I, like I said, I've been gluing these puppies for a while, um, so I'm just going to show you again, um, you know, folds down nicely like that, and then we can, we can transport it, um, but the, those elastic, uh, rigging is really forgiving, uh, and it makes it easy to, uh, actually, uh, to tie, tie them up. Uh, I have, uh, on certain ships that I've built, I've used uh, just regular black spread as well, um. Yeah, but uh, in this case, I, I I just stuck with what uh, Firelock Games provided. All right, so I've just shown you the anchor. I've kind of just shown you all the completed pieces. So I've got my cannons done, anchor's done. It's all rigged up. And I'm just putting it all, all together for you. Before we move on to the next stage, which was making our sails. Just kind of want to show you the completed look on everything, if we can see it. <laughs> That's the thing, they're so small, right? Uh, but I'm, you know, trying to get it up into the camera so you can see it. Although now uh, I really, uh, like I mentioned, when I repainted the bottom, making sure they don't fill those swivel gun holes with crap paint, well, it was super easy to put these swivel guns in because I didn't do that. Um, that is a mistake. Don't do that. Um, this has worked out good. So just showing you the whole overall scheme of the masks and, and uh, the cannons. And I think everything ties in really nice together. Uh, it looks like it all belongs you know, from the same boat. All right, that's it for that part. We're going to move on to the sails. Okay, this is the material I like to use uh, by Fabric Creations. Uh, it's available at Walmart. It's pre-cut fabric. Uh, that's what I use to make my sails. Uh, really inexpensive. So we're here, I'm showing you uh, all my templates. So I've made a template for all my sails that I trace onto that fabric uh, of all the ships that Firelock Games makes. I've made all sorts of templates for them. Uh, just so it's easy to go back to them if I ever have to make them. Um, I like to make uh, cardboard. That's just cardstock templates. Uh, but you'll see uh, what I do with it in a minute here. So I'm just going to fold out that fabric. Uh, by the way, that is my... Uh, 
<laughs> my deep freeze that's in the plunder den. Uh, yeah, it's been in, I think, many pictures and many videos. Uh, but uh, I do most of that stuff over here on top of the freezer. Um, uh, yeah, I got limited workspace, right? Um, anyway, so here, here is the, the cardboard cutouts. So I've already pre measured, uh, what size sails I need. Uh, I believe the bark is, uh, these are four, the bigger sails, four inches by four inches, and, uh, the smaller ones, three inches by three inches. They're just squares. Uh, the bark's got a fairly, uh, easy, uh, sails to it. Um, so it's a good one, like I said, it's a good one to start with too. Uh, not only to play with, but to, to assemble or make your sails um, because it's, it's not really uh, tricky. Uh, when you get to the uh, larger ships like the 6 rate, of course uh, the sails change in size as they go further up the mast. Uh, and, uh, you know, they, they're not squares. So they're kind of, a, they go a, more of a triangle shape. So um, it gets wider at the bottom than it is at the top. So it can get complicated. Uh, to do sales on a larger ship like that. Um, so I definitely have gone ahead and made uh, templates for all that to make it easier for the next time I have to do that, uh, those sales. Uh, and, and actually, some of the medium-sized sails on the fixed rate fit, fit on the, uh, the frigate, the light frigate. So you can, some of them can uh, work, uh, do some double duty. Uh, they can do both. Um, but in the Barks case, really, it's only the Barks. A similar, I guess, ship would be the Paraguay, uh, the Paragua. Uh, is similar, smaller, but it's more of a rectangle. Um, and they're not quite the same same size. Anyways, I'm just showing you how I'm tracing that uh, up. I'm just showing you the tracing process. So I'm kind of rushing on here. Uh, and my pencil is not super sharp. <laughs> well, actually, you don't want it to have it super sharp because you actually tear into the fabric. Um, but uh, I, I just kind of trying to show you guys uh, what I what I am doing. But I am going to cut these. <laughs> it's good enough, uh, and cut that. Uh, like I said, the the bark sails are pretty forgiving. They're just they're just squares. Uh, make sure you get a good pair of uh, fabric scissors. So there's lots of different types of scissors out there. But if you're going to cut fabric, use a fabric scissor. Uh, they cut the best. Uh, I mean, you could have sharp scissors that you've sharpened. Uh, again, whatever works for you. But uh, I prefer just get a good pair of uh, fabric scissors. And it cuts really easily. And don't have to worry about that. See where on this one there's a crease to where the, it bent in, in, uh, in the fabric. Don't worry about that. We're going to be gluing over top. We're going to be painting, sorry, over top of that. Uh, and that's, that's going to be a non-factor. So I'm not too worried about that. I know this is kind of a, a more probably more time consuming. Uh, there's lots of different ways you can you can make sales. Um, I just like it this way because I can uh, add a lot of uh, details to the sale, or I can paint designs on it, and uh, I really like to do my sales this way. Again, I'm just trimming it up off camera there. You're not seeing what I'm doing, but I'm just uh, making sure that's a nice, perfect square, uh, my sail. Okay, so we're going to move on to the flag. Now, the flag's a little different than the uh, sails, and why it's different is uh, I do it as a long piece because uh, the sail I'm going to wrap around a dowel. Uh, and uh, I wanted to, so really it's uh, the size of the flag times two because you're going to fold it over. Uh, and having that extra layer of fabric in there uh, when you fold it over, it'll make the flag a little more sturdy. Uh, because I do want to add uh, waves into the flag, uh, I want it to have a little more body to it than, than the sails. The sails I'm only going to do one layer of fabric. Um, but the... Uh, the flag, I'm going to actually going to do two layers of fabric. So you don't need to see me cut it out. I'm just going to fast forward here. Uh, I'm just going to cut this out. Okay, so I'm going to do that uh, vintage white out where we painted the bottom of the boat with. Um, we're going to use it to uh, color our sails. And why use the vintage white? 
um, is it, it's an off-white uh, because I want to use white highlights on it afterwards. So this is a kid's ball. Uh, I think I've posted pictures of me painting sails on balls for a while now. <laughs> but essentially, I take that craft paint and uh, see the, the fabric is very porous. So the, that craft paint will go right through the material and stick right to the ball. Uh, and you're going to spread it out. And you're going to put lots of layers of that uh, of craft paint on top of that. And what's going to happen is, uh, the, as, a, as I mentioned, the craft paint hardens. Um, and it'll harden in the shape of the ball. Uh, and the reason why I wanted the ball is because it looks like a billowed sail. Um, you know, I've done uh, flat sails where I just do it on a flat uh, a plastic lid, which is probably what I'm going to do with my uh, my flags uh, when we get to the flag in, in a minute here. Uh, but I just wanted you to show you this technique uh, of uh, putting it onto a ball. Um, you can get these balls uh, at uh, Walmart, uh, you know, a dollar store. They cost a couple of bucks. Uh, you can probably get uh, probably 30, 40 sales out of, out of one ball before, you know, it just becomes unusable. As you keep uh applying these sails to them uh you're always leaving residue behind uh and it's really hard to clean them off afterwards um so yeah like i said you get 30 40 out of it uh and then it's just a ball with a lot of white paint on it <laughs> uh, uh but uh, anyways it works good for uh what you need here um it, it uh, takes well to the craft paint and uh it has a good shape to it uh, and this this ball is good for any size sail that uh, any size ship. I've done it all the way on the six rate frigate too. Um, you can only put less of them on there, but it works. All right, uh, again, I'm going to go to uh, a titanium white now. So before it was a vintage white on the sails. This is the flag, and the reason why I'm using titanium white is the middle of the flag. This is a Dutch flag, is white. Uh, and I'm not going to bother painting the white on afterwards. I just might as well do the whole flag white and then add the uh, blue and orange on afterwards. So we're going to start with the main color of the flag, which is white. And you can see, uh, if I get my arm out of the way, <laughs> uh, I put uh, the flag and folded it over a dowel. So that flag is folded in half. Uh, and I've used two other dowels. And, and the reason why I've done that is uh, I'm going to put this paint on top of it uh, and I want that uh, raised areas where the dowels to be sticking out so wh what it's going to look like is that the the flag is uh, below you know it's flowing in the wind um, I've done really long ones uh, I don't know if, uh, if, if you guys have seen my tartana build I did a really long red one a streamer kind of uh, flag uh, there's a lot of different types of flags you can do with this kind of technique uh, and it's really effective. Uh, once it dries, it hardens and it keeps its shape. Um, it's a little tricky to get started, uh, but you want to get the paint between the dowels and and get stuck to this. Uh, that's a, actually a tote lid that I'm sticking it to. Uh, I do my flat sails on a tote lid, and I use, I use it to make my flags. And so I'm just going to put a generous amount of this white uh, titanium white on here. Um, the more craft paint you put on, the better. It'll harden uh, even uh, more strong. Sometimes I'll let, even let it dry uh, and then come back and hit it again if I don't think I put enough. I shouldn't, it shouldn't be transparent. You shouldn't be able to see through that material at all. Uh, if, it, if you can see through it, then you haven't put enough craft paint on. Um, it should be pretty solid. Same goes for the, uh, I didn't mention that when I was doing the sails. I put, like I said, I put a very generous amount of paint on there. Uh, and then I'll even let it dry a smidgen and then put more on there just to make sure you got enough craft paint. Uh, and also you want it very heavy on the front. Uh, if you make it too light, it's too hard to pull off the ball too. Uh, so you got to make sure that you, uh, it has enough weight to the top so it's easy to peel it off the ball afterwards too. Same for as it peels it off the lid here. All right, just showing you. I'm going to move the camera a little bit just hopefully you can see uh, the ridges on there. All right, uh, so it's dried. It's been wait 24 hours. Uh, I'm just going to show you. Uh, just You peel those dowels off. Uh, 
but I forgot to mention I use two different types of uh, sizes. I've gone sometimes where I've done four different sizes on there, but this is good. As you can see, I just got those nice little waves in the flag, so it looks like it's in the wind. Um, so I flipped it around because I'm going to paint the back side. So the, the back side still looks like material. Uh, it doesn't have that nice white color like the front. Like, like It's a little off-white. So I'm going to paint it so it matches the reverse side. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick it back on top of the dowels in the reverse way. Uh, that way uh, it'll dry the other way as well. And then both sides will harden with that wave wavy pattern on it. Um, and then it'll be ready later for adding the colors on. So I'm going to fast forward here. You don't need to see me watch me paint it. I'm just painting the reverse side. Uh, and then I'm going to just where it's raised in there, I'm just going to stick those dowels back and put it back down on the, uh, on the lid. Okay, so we're going to paint these sails. So we're going to go back to my favorite Pablo Orange. And I like to add uh, craft paint to this because it just adds more layers of craft paint to it to make it even uh, even harder on the sail. So it's easier to peel off again, just as I mentioned in the last segment. Um, so I'm not overly careful here. I'm just kind of trying to make a where I want it to be orange on the bottom. Again, like I did with the mass, I'm going to go with a black line to separate it. Um, but just kind of showing you what I'm doing here. And what colors I use. So remember, this is a Dutch bark. A lot of uh, oranges uh, being used in, in here. That brush uh, I'm using is uh, it's that angled uh, army painter brush. Uh, that I did uh, use before on the cannons for the dry brushing. That is, this is uh, but I'm using it to paint these sails in this in this particular one. It's a good size, and you can get a nice straight line with it. All right, the next color, uh, desert yellow, and this is the uh, the under. So you want to imply that there's lines on the sails. Uh, I know a lot of people make their homemade sails and they have it sewn in there and those look fantastic by the way. <laughs> but uh, I just find an alternative. I use the old paint. So I'll just show you what I'm doing here. I'm just adding implied lines on the sail. So it looks like that's where it's sewn together. Um, without actually having to sew anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like uh, I, I'm uh, a little lazy when it comes to that. I'd rather just paint it. So I, I kind of go into these corners and and uh, because I wanted to kind of have a weathered feel in those areas. And it seems crazy, but we're going to be covering this with white paint in a minute. Um, but this stuff will show up through the white paint. Uh, we're not going to cover it completely. Um, but we're just we need to put this down first uh, and then we're going to put the white paint over top of it um, so you should be able to faintly see these lines and these uh, textures underneath um, so it gives it an implied that it's there um, but uh, like I said it, it, won't, it won't be that apparent all right so we're gonna go to that titanium uh, white um, some more craft paint throw another layer of craft paint on there and I'll show you what I mean by uh, blending it out in a minute here. So I'm using that same uh, angled uh, army painter brush. Um, and I'm just going to... I want it to be really, really, really bright white in, in those panels. And then I'm going to work the other colors into the other sides. So as you can see I'm covering the lines. And I'll probably go over it a few times here. Uh, you'll, you'll, I'll paint this whole sail up for you guys to see. Uh, just what I'm talking about. But at this stage, um, I know a lot of people have asked uh, how I got patterns on my sails and everything. Once it's dried on this ball, um, I've used a pencil and drawn in designs right on there and then paint them in. Uh, I did my uh, King Golden Caps uh, flagship there with uh, 
with the uh, artwork on on the sails. Um, same with some other native uh, crafts I've made. Uh, they have very intricate sails, uh, and that's really how I did it. I I kind of uh, just let the undercoat dry, and then I I really I just used a pencil and drew the pattern right on it, uh, and then uh, painted over that. Um, so this is a, just a Dutch bark, so there's not a really a whole lot of uh, sophisticated patterns going on in here. <laughs> we're just having some basic colors. Uh, orange stripes is about as, uh, as uh, crazy as we're going to get here. Um, but uh, I just want to point that out, um, that you, you, could, you could take this, uh, trick this out really uh, crazy and just go all sorts of different patterns on here. Uh, on my Dutch bark, I have a, their lion on, uh, on the main sail. Um, that's similar how I did that. I just penciled that in afterwards and then painted it in. I have some big plans for uh, the Spanish galleon. Um, uh, the Spanish actually uh, very uh, have very unique sails, and I'm looking forward to painting those. All right, going to go to a little bit of a lava orange, and uh, why I'm going to that color is I want to add a little highlight to that that orange stripe that's on the bottom. I'm just showing you kind of what it looks like after I added that white on there. Now, I, it don't show in the video, but I just wanted to point out that the final sale, I did take some more of that uh, orange, uh, orange color and added a little bit of white to it, uh, the lava orange there just to get an even lighter color. So I let it dry and then I'm gonna hit it again to just add even more highlights um, to it. Just it kind of gives it a, you know, just like everything else, a little bit of weathered look. Uh, you know, it's a little lighter in the center and darker to the edges. Kind of carry that same concept all the way through the whole boat. It, it just kind of uniforms everything and makes everything look like it belongs together. Now, it's hard to see where the actual outlines of the sails are. It's just because I paint right over top of the edges. I really don't care at this point. <laughs> it's just um, just kind of adding color on there. Once you peel the sails off and then you trim uh, the remnants of the paint or whatever else on there, and you'll have a perfectly good square sail. All right, just about ready for the next stage here. So we're going to go into that matte black. As I mentioned before, um, I like to separate and define the lines um, from where the two colors are. So I'm just going to put a line as a demonstration. Um, I don't think I put it on as straight as I would like because I was filming it. Uh, after I finished uh, showing you this in this video, I went back and, and uh, repainted the lines on there just to make them uh, straight. Sometimes you got to touch up the orange and the white, uh, depending on how your steady your hand is, <laughs> how straight that line is. But I really like the way uh, the black separates it, and I think it's important to add that uh, definition in there. Um, again, you don't have to. I've done ones where I've just made it really dirty in the center. Um, I think I did that on my pirate version of the bark. So here I'm just showing you, because uh, I peeled off the sail already, just kind of where it was sitting. Peeled it off. That's what it looks like afterwards. Um, it's got kind of a nice age color on the back. I just leave it. Uh, you can add more craft paint and paint the back if you want. Uh, but frankly, I just, uh, just leave it the way it is. So I'm just showing you, I just kind of clip off the remnants on there. Uh, and I've already done a pretty good, good job of cutting it already <laughs> before I showed you that. But I just kind of wanted to show you uh, what I did there. All right, so this is the, uh, I'm just showing you where I'm going to put them. And this is probably the <laughs> most controversial part, uh, is I don't sew my sails onto my ship. Um uh, you can if you want. You can actually sew these kind on there. But I use the old hot glue gun. Uh, old crafting my buddy. <laughs> the old... I You know what? I, to be honest, I can't be uh, bothered to sew the mod there. Uh, and I just glue it on. 
I uh, just wanted to show you real quickly here, uh, when I take the flag off that uh, dowel, I had to use this box cutter and just, you kind of push it off uh, and try to loosen it off because it gets stuck to that uh, dowel pretty good. All right, uh, just showing you the colors I used for that. Uh, it's a Citadel paint, uh, Citadel blue there. Uh, and then I use this uh, Pablo orange again. I'm just showing you the colors that I'm putting on. Uh, I like that blue. It looks uh, really good for the Dutch flag. And I do uh, plan on highlighting the raised areas on the flag. So now once the flag is dried, pull it off the dowel there. Um, and then I'm going to add highlights to this flag. So I use uh, this matte white by Army Painter. I'm going to mix it into the orange and the blue. I think it's Marag blue. I can't even say it. <laughs> and that Pablo uh, orange there. Uh, but I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to mix uh, that blue into the white. And uh, just essentially making a lighter, lighter blue. Um, and I'm going to add it to the, uh, to the sail here, but I'm going to add it on the raised areas of the sail. So wherever it's, uh, rolling, um, it would see the light first, right? So it would be the lightest and it would be the darkest between those ruffles. So we just kind of, uh, add a little highlight. It just really brings it out some more. Uh, it really, uh, gives it that flowing, it really emphasizes it. Uh, that's what I'm getting at, adding those uh, colors onto it. And I, I will do the same thing with the orange. I think I'll just show this out a little bit further uh, just to show you the, the technique. Because it's not just putting that highlight on there. I'll usually take the, uh, take the paint off the brush uh, and then smooth it out and uh, like pull it out in between too. So I just really want to blend it. You don't want it to have like blue then a big defined uh, light blue line and then dark blue again and it, it won't look right so you got to blend the two colors in together um, to flow it all in together uh, and then sometimes I'll go even back even and make an even lighter blue and hit the edges again and go up and it, you got it kind of like looks like it fades away it really gives that uh, the, the you know what you're what you're looking for on this flag So I'm just going to show you uh, what I'm doing here. All right, carry that over to the back. Uh, being a little quicker about it this time. <laughs> uh, you know, sometimes you're timing out these videos, you're not sure... I, uh, you know, like I probably should have just painted the one side for you guys, but I ended up painting the both sides. <laughs> Didn't need to, but um, I think the one side would have been sufficient. Uh, so right now, uh, I'm just cleaning my brush off because I'm going to go to a uh, orange white mix now, and that's really what I'm going to uh, to highlight the orange with. So I'm just showing you on my plate again. Same concepts as before, just two colors and have a spot in the middle. Even though I don't really need a whole lot this time, this is just a, a little flag, right? I'm just getting that mixed up good. And then similar to the blue, we are going to go to the ruffles again. And uh, ruffles in those flags and just highlight that up. And sometimes right on the very tip, on the edge, anywhere where I think the sun would hit first. Um, sometimes I, I go too little, little overzealous with, uh, with the colors and then I have to go back with the darker. But I'm pretty happy with this. This looks pretty good. And I, I kind of just gives you a good demonstration of how you can uh, make your flag look like it's uh, flapping in the wind. All right, so that's it. This is the final look at the bark. It looks like it's got his crew in there, his Dutch crew. Um, 
and I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video. I really enjoyed uh, putting this together. Um, you know, maybe uh, one day we'll do a bigger ship in the future, uh, if you guys want me to. Um, I know I have a Dutch flute that I haven't put together yet, and uh, I, I want to make a pirate sloop, and uh, there's a whole bunch of different, uh, different ships that I have in mind that I uh, would like to uh, build. So, uh, if you guys like this video, uh, make sure you hit the like button, uh, and consider subscribing to the Plunder Den, and uh, get updates on uh, the latest videos. Alright everyone, thanks so much uh, for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.